Hello everyone. I'm currently heading to Pisac in the Andean mountains to explore a very local medicine taken from the San Pedro cactus with the intention of becoming an enlightened yogi, hula hooping hippie, superstar DJ, time traveling, laser beam for eyes, Jedi master. Not. So mescaline is a psychedelic known for its effects comparable to LSD and psilocybin. And mescaline occurs naturally in several species of cacti, including peyote used in Native American ceremonies and San Pedro, found at high altitudes here in South America. It's been used as a traditional medicine and for healing for over 3,000 years. Let's go try it out. I'm off to find a taxi. All right guys, it's currently 7.30 a.m. I'm on my way to the ceremony. Sometimes when talking about psychedelic journeys, we mention set and setting. Set being mindset. My set right now is nervous, but I'm playing it off as excited. I'm super open to the whole idea of it. I haven't done much research into San Pedro at all, so I'm not holding any expectations. I've got about a half an hour walk. Check out these views. All right guys, I've made it. I'm gonna turn my phone off for the next 24 hours and then I'll tell you all about it. Guys, it's been three days since the ceremony. Since the ceremony, 90% of the time, I've been asleep. The whole ceremony really took it out of me, which is strange because the other two guys, the next day were alive and kicking, but I was. On the day of the ceremony, I was the first to arrive. I was greeted by Suzanne and her three doggos. And as far as setting goes, the whole place was like lush gardens with all of these pathways and areas to explore. Suzanne asked me what led me to San Pedro and I didn't really have much of an answer outside of curiosity. But then the more information I received on San Pedro about how it's incredible for transitional periods and for relieving baggage and things placed upon us through our life, I felt as though it was kind of the perfect medicine at the perfect time. And it's funny because that was my actual intention, was to drop any baggage that I've been carrying that's unnecessary. Or, you know, sometimes we have baggage that's out of our control, to just be grateful for that baggage. So then the other two lads showed up and we all got acquainted over ginger tea. But before long, the ceremony had begun. We were greeted with a cup of this thick room temperature liquid. It was the cactus that had been boiled for 20 hours and I well, wasn't brave enough to put a smell to it. And then us boys were guided to work with our feelings and not our mind throughout the whole process. And then we downed it as quickly as possible. It was not pleasant. And then we waited. It takes three or more hours for the medicine to actually peak and time moves so fluidly in the whole experience. It's like you close your eyes and you go through a whole experience that takes hours. You open your eyes to feel like you just blinked. And the group would separate and find their own little safe sanctuaries within the garden. And I sat at the top of the garden, there was two chairs. And I remember feeling like the DNA of the wind. I could almost see it's strands. And I remember Suzanne came and sat next to me. She came to check on me and she asked, how am I feeling? 
And I said, this might sound strange, Suzanne, but I can, I can feel the ancestry of the wind. And she proceeded to reassure me. She said, it didn't, it's not strange. She reassured me, it's not strange. You just didn't know you had it within you. And I remember saying, it sounds strange to me. And I proceeded to laugh at my own joke until I was in tears. The next moment I found myself in a hammock studying my hands and I feel as though I was watching every cell regenerate. As I looked at my hands I could see them go from old to young and I remember feeling very childlike in this moment. Suzanne even captured some pictures of me in this hammock. I was offered some food and even though during the whole trip I was still quite conscious of my body, I never lost my body but I was still so out of my mind that I'd never felt like eating. And my appetite is only just returning now. One of the last moments I remember before I went to hibernate for almost 12 hours, I was again sitting at the top of the garden just watching the mountains breathe with a face of perplexity. And Suzanne came to check on me again and she asked me how I'm feeling. And I said, confused. I remember just being so confused, I couldn't figure out what was happening. And she told me that I was in my mind. And how was I feeling? So I remember breathing into my heart and then actually feeling connected to everything. I really wanted to know. I tried to understand everything instead of feel it. And in this moment, I felt so connected and open the mountains, caves were eyes, its valleys were like capillaries, pumping its life force through it. You could see everything, like veins, arteries, capillaries, blood pumping through it. So strange. And, and I saw a lot of like ancient Asian, Tibetan, Chinese iconography all through the mountains. Everything was alive. As we closed the session, the fire was roaring, the two other lads were laid down by the fire, I was falling asleep in my chair, and I just went to bed fully clothed. And the next morning, I remember telling everyone I was having these strange, repetitive, fever-like dreams. And Suzanne clocked that there might, might be something deeper to that within my psyche. And she sat me down, and she kind of got me to connect. She guided me to connect with each part of this dream. Before I know it, I was having a huge emotional release. I was sitting there silent. These tears were just rolling out my face. And I feel as though there's gonna be a long integration with this one. Because everything's so feeling based and not so mental, it's super hard to even explain anything. I can't explain if anything's changed. All I know is I just feel a lot lighter. Two days later, me and Suzanne met up for a short integration and she invited me back to the property so I could show you guys the gardens and we even got to ask her a few questions. So this is where the ceremony began. The three lads, I sat in this corner here. This is where we had the fire for the evening as everyone kind of came down, started to land. And I remember spending a lot of time in this chair and this was my view. From here I could literally see the mountain almost breathing. I can see its life force running through it. And a lot of the guys here, they talk about Pachamama, which is like the mother nature. And they talk about how little caves in the mountains are like her eyes. And I was seeing a lot of eyes up in the, the sort of cave regions.
at one point I found this little staircase and I walked, I walked up and I didn't know if I was allowed to be up here. But I just came and stood up here, what felt like the highest point in the whole property in, in the garden. What is San Pedro? What is San Pedro? That's a really big question. San Pedro is one of the traditional medicines of, amongst other countries, Peru. Mm -hmm. And it is a cactus, and we have some beautiful specimens just here. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very fast growing cactus. One of the main elements of it is mescaline, but it's not the only element. It's super fast growing. Come and have a look at these ones. There's this one was actually planted straight and then it fell over. And this rocket get, keeps getting pushed up, but it actually grew these other ones to straighten itself up. All right, a bit of sort of balance. To balance itself so it wouldn't break. Do you know, I remember standing here yesterday and thinking it looked like a huge penis. <laughs> yeah, but it's got three I just bits. had a flashback. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one, once a year, around November up here, yeah. they flower. They have these most beautiful white flowers. Mm -hmm. And this crown here with the flowers, then they go into the fruit, but then these pups started growing from it. Okay. So I have, I'm going to leave it, but at some stage it'll get so heavy that it'll break off. Okay, so these, it's unusual for the... For it to grow like that, yes. Okay. And you can see how it's swaying in the wind. Yeah. But it's a traditional medicine. It's a heart-centered medicine, so it's used very much for people who have um, emotional pain. Mm -hmm. That would be more or less all of us. And trauma, PTSD, all of that type of thing. Okay. How long have you been working with San Pedro? Um, I would say now about 16 years. Yeah. Yeah? Shall we sit in our, the seats that this you were sitting in? You can hear that there's a football game going yeah. on. Maria wants to join. Does she? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. <laughs> um, do you work with any other plant medicines? No, I don't. Only San Pedro. From the beginning? From the... Um, I, when I f did the year that I was working with somebody else and studying. I was working with ayahuasca and San Pedro, mm -hmm. but San Pedro's always had a place in my heart and I always felt at home in it. I don't feel at home in ayahuasca. Okay, do you know why? Um, to me, it feels like it comes from a totally different, almost a different universe. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it comes from the jungle. The jungle has a lot of other energies around it and whereas this one feels really clear and it feels like it goes it swims through different cultures quite easily okay. and different consciousness as well okay. and can i ask this is going to be a hard question to word you've done a lot of ceremonies yeah. comparatively to other ceremonies how was the ceremony two days ago with with the boys hmm. I don't tend to compare. Yeah, this is why it's tough to work. Yeah. Look, or or it, just how was it from your perspective? It was sweet. It's always an interesting energy if you have either all males or all females. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just different. Yeah. And with ceremonies with just men, it tends to be quieter, uh -huh. more introspective, which it was. But it was also a really sweet ceremony. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if... You know, I wouldn't compare it. I don't think that that's a really good way of working with the medicine, to, to be honest. But it yeah, was a super yeah. sweet energy and both an open and grounded energy. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who would, you, who would you recommend San Pedro for the most? Who, who would be the target? Is it for everyone or is certain people working on certain things? I would not recommend anything on a spiritual path to everybody. Mm -hmm. I think that's really, you know, I sometimes I see people do write-ups and say everybody should do this and it's right, like, whoa. Right, right. It's I, find that, I find that a bit scary uh -huh. um, because we all have our individual paths yeah. to connecting more with ourselves and connecting to spirit. Mm -hmm. um, I would suggest that the first thing is some, if you really want to try it, mm -hmm. you know, 
and if you want to have change in your life. I don't think you can work with plant medicines and everything stays the same. Right. You know, it's, it's a process of change and it brings in a process of change mm. for people. If you're in a lot of pain, um, if you've had a lot of trauma, it's an amazing medicine. And it's, if you're in places like that, which also has its innate vulnerability, then it's also important to see who you're working with, mm -hmm. that they have training in holding people in deep spaces. I would say that most people who come to do a retreat are actually in some sort of pain that is really affecting their lives. And, you know, they're at a stage that, okay, I'll do anything to start to work with this. Yeah. This is funny. This is something we mentioned, like, I, when we left where we lived, I said, I kind of want drastic change. Mm -hmm. And and then we, we mentioned how that comes with doing something drastic. And not that this is drastic or insane, but it's a very it's something that really delves into your psyche. So it feels drastic. Oh, it definitely feels drastic because we're taught so much to be looking at outside all the time. Mm. And, you know, the change is going to come from outside. We don't really want to change, generally. Mm. We want our life to change around yeah. us. No? <laughs> and this is actually taking that mirror and looking inside. Mm -hmm. And then from that looking inside, hey, everything changes. Mm -hmm. um, I asked you a question earlier. What was that? The question was, can I recommend you on, ah. on YouTube? That would be really sweet. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. The, the video might get one view. It might get more. So that would be sweet. I'll put thank it out you. there in the world and, and see, see what happens. And I want to say thank you very much. That's more than a pleasure. <laughs> so how has it been for you? Um, I, I, think, I think it's still working. I I've not, would agree I've, with I've that. definitely not touched down. I'm still going through it. Um, I feel very light in my mind. Like I was saying to you earlier, these past two days I've been asleep most of the day, so my, my physical body is very heavy and, and tired. But mentally I feel super light. I think integration is it's, it's just going to keep popping things up and I'm just going to keep taking them as they come. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hit me up with any questions and hit that subscribe button to just see what happens down the line. Suzanne's information is all down below.